Watch how I transform my brother's laundry room on a budget. We're gonna take this 90s laundry room and make it over without any major renovation. There's gonna be a lot of cool projects that you can apply to your own home. As a little sister, I have some big design ideas and my brother doesn't agree with all of them, but I think, fingers crossed, that he will love it at the end of this makeover. I'm gonna make over this space with just a couple hundred dollars and I think you're gonna see how far you can stretch your budget. Welcome to my next makeover space and it is this very tiny laundry room. Like it's so tiny that I can't even capture it on video. But we are gonna add so much character because I love, love, love a window in a laundry room. Like doesn't that make laundry so much better? So this is actually my brother's laundry room and we're gonna be doing so many fun things in here and I can't wait to show you. So the plan is to paint the cabinets, paint the trim, fresh coat of paint on the wall, some type of interesting wall treatment here and definitely lots of storage. Here's the mood board that we put together. So my sister-in-law really loves a coastal vibe and in her home, she already has a lot of blues and whites and grays. So we're gonna bring all those elements into the space. One of the most controversial things I'm gonna do in this space is actually paint the trim the trim around the window and the crown molding a really rich blue color. So this is a small space and I love doing something fun in a small space. And if you haven't seen yet, this painted trim trend is really in right now. So that's kind of the jumping point for this room. Since the objective is to keep this really under budget, we're gonna be using paint because that has the power to transform any space. So let's start off by taping off all of the trim so that we can give it that nice blue color. We're taking a risk by painting the crown molding, but I really think it's gonna help draw the eye upwards because these are eight foot ceilings. So anytime you have a shorter ceiling, you want to make the room look taller. There's so much taping to do in this tiny room. I initially thought that this laundry room could be done in just a couple hours, but just the taping alone took so much longer than I anticipated. I'm gonna show you the color, and this is a really beautiful color. We're gonna be using it on the trim, so that's like the baseboards, the window trim, and also the cabinets. So this is Racing Blue by Sherwin-Williams, and um, it's got like some gray tones in it as well. We didn't wanna to go too, too bright. Um, basically like Asma's whole style is like this like coastal kind of feel. So let's see. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Let me get on the wall. So this is actually showing a little bit more purple than we initially thought. Like it almost looks like a periwinkle kind of color. So I'm gonna let it dry. I'll do a second coat just on this corner and then we'll see how it goes, how it looks. We tried it in lots of different lightings, but uh, yeah, it was a big fat no. While me and Asma decide on the next paint color for the cabinets and trim, we decided to get the doors off of the cabinets just to get them started in the process of priming them and prepping them for painting. And let me tell you, when I asked my brother to bring a drill so I could remove the doors, well, he did it instead. That's like typical big brother. Can you just take this downstairs? Huh? Can you just take this downstairs? You know, how, you know how to paint these, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Which I cleaned them with. Well, you have to clean them with like a degreaser. Have you done that before? No, I usually just use a baby wipe. <laughs> <laughs> Painting your doors is such a great way to save money when you're doing any type of an upgrade to your kitchen or laundry room or even bathroom too. And it's actually so much easier than people think. You don't need a fancy paint sprayer, you literally just need a roller and a paintbrush. I have a really in-depth video on all my tricks and tips on how to paint cabinets. So I'll just show you the basics of how to do it here, but I really recommend that you go over and watch that video. I'll also add it to my description box below. So we start off by deglossing the doors and this just takes off the shininess so that it's a bit easier to sand them. And then you go in with a really gritty sandpaper, use a P60 or P80 and take off that top layer. Now it doesn't have to be completely removed but you definitely want to have the top layer scruffed up so that your primer can adhere to it. Next, use a strong bonding primer to adhere to your doors. You definitely don't want the paint to chip. So I get asked a lot whether I can just use a paint and primer in one. No, no you cannot. You have to go in and use a really good primer and I'll link some uh, primers below that I love. 
If you see any bubbles, just go in with a P240 grit sandpaper, like a fine sandpaper, and sand any of that down. Make sure, make sure you do this by hand because you don't want to actually take the primer off. Esma and I took a really long time to decide on the next paint color. We looked through so many photographs on Pinterest and we finally found this color. So this is Storm Cloud by Sherwin Williams and I think it's so much better for this space. It's a little bit more toned down and it has gray undertones which is really what Esma wanted. And this laundry room actually gets a lot of sunlight so a warm blue would actually always look more like a purple. So that's why we went with a blue that has cool undertones. I swear, every home built in the late 1990s or early 2000s has this beige color on the wall, so it feels so good to replace it with this nice bright white. As I'm getting the white paint on the wall, I'm actually so excited because I'm starting to see this come together. I love how this blue and this white look next to each other. I think it's really gonna bring that coastal vibe into the space that Esmo is going for. A great way to add cohesion in your home is to use the same white in different spaces. So this is Snowbound and they've already used this in their hallway, in their kitchen and lots of other spaces. Plus you save money because we didn't have to buy another can of paint. And since this project is all about a budget laundry room, I'm all for saving money. Now that we know we love the color of the trim, I'm gonna go ahead and use that same color to paint the cabinet doors. So to paint the cabinet doors, I'm using a brush to go in and paint all those small edges that a roller isn't really gonna be able to get into. And then I dived in with a foam roller and painted the entire surfaces of the cabinets. So the front and the back, and I always like to do two coats to get really good coverage. Whenever you're updating a space, go for the details. I love these cute little knobs because they're actually whimsical and really different than any other type of knobs that you might have seen. Behind the laundry machines, we also want to add a type of wall treatment, just something to give some dimension to this space. So Asma picked out this grass cloth wallpaper and to be honest, I wasn't a really big fan, but then when I applied it, it looked even worse. So I'm not sure if you can fully see it. You can probably see it on that panel, but you can really see that right there. And I just, I don't think it should look like that. Most of the wallpapers I've done don't have that type of finish. So now I have to convince Asma to take this down because you can really see the seams there and how they're overlapping and just ridgy. To disguise the laundry hookup, I'm using a piece of plywood cut as a shelf. So I need to wood condition it and then stain it. And I also added this edge banding to the front of it because plywood has like this really ugly edge and we don't want it to look like that. And this is actually activated by heat. So you just use an iron and just iron it on. It's so I'm easy I'm using to do. special walnut for the shelf. I didn't want to go too warm in that space since a lot of the blues and the whites in there are much cooler toned. We finally resolved our dilemma of the backsplash behind the laundry tub. So my sister-in-law Asma agreed that we should add shiplap. And so I'm installing the shiplap with nails. And I'm a little bit nervous just because we have a lot of plumbing here, but um, we're gonna do something different behind the actual laundry connection just to be extra safe. I'm back and uh, if this was my house, I don't think I could survive like a few days without the laundry machine. So I really want to just finish at least this back part so that we can get their laundry machine back up because like three kids and no laundry machines, it's gotta be tough. That's not just anything, but I'm sure it's tough. Okay, so um, I have to do this, this area, this area around this plumbing. So I was actually just gonna go in with my nail gun and nail just like at the top here. My brother asked me to use glue instead and I was like, okay, I hope you never take this down because I, if you've been here for a while, I never use glue. I just don't like to use glue because I know that when you take it down, it's gonna just totally destroy your walls. So yeah, we're gonna hope that they're just gonna use it forever and ever. And also, Satisfaction level of taking this wallpaper down is so high. I'm so glad that Esma agreed that we can put up shiplap. I'm just gonna use shiplap that I have left over for my bathroom project, so I don't need to even cut it down to size because it doesn't matter how long it is, it's just gonna be hidden behind the machine.
you're enjoying this project so far, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notified for my next budget project. To disguise the laundry hookup, I'm using two brackets right at the edge of the room. Um, we were kind of nervous about hitting some of the plumbing, so I wanted to make sure this would go into studs, and it was far enough away from the plumbing. So I added both the brackets, and then for some reason when I attached the shelf, it was totally crooked. And as you can tell by my reaction, I was just like, what in the world happened? We had a good laugh about it, and then I went ahead and I fixed it. You're gonna make mistakes in DIY and that's totally cool. The most important thing is to know that they can be fixed. See, that's how it's supposed to be. Perfectly level, yay. So the shelf looks perfect. I mounted the shelf high so we could have a hanging plant. Initially, this is the plan I got for it, but as you can see, it's actually not covering anything up. So I'll show you how we're gonna modify it. I grabbed this from Ikea as well. So this is like a path of just a bunch of vines hanging and as you can see this leaf matches perfectly with those okay so we're going to open this up and all i'm going to do is glue gun <laughs> some of those vines to make it more full a glue gun is one of my favorite craft tools it's so versatile so I just want to make this area more full. So I'm going to take my glue gun. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> and just attach maybe it to here, like just making it a little bit more full. This was just a little bit of an artwork and it was kind of fun just to figure out which leaves should go in what spot to conceal that laundry connection as best as possible. So I ended up snipping off some of the leaves from the back side and adding them to the front. In a small laundry room, you definitely need a ton of organization. So I got this really cool um, clothesline off of Amazon and it's so neat because you can mount it um, in any direction and it retracts back into itself. So this is actually gonna be mounted like on an angle in their laundry room because there is no two walls that we could use that are right across from each other. And I totally had to test this out. Like, isn't this so cool? This is blowing my mind. And when you're done, it just retracts back into itself, which I think is so neat. Asma also had a broom and a mop that just stood in a corner and would often fall down, so she needed a place to hang them up. We wanted to hang them behind the door just so that we could use that space because one, it's hidden, and two, it's actually like dead space. So I got these command hooks. Um, they're just really inexpensive and they just stick right onto the wall. The other way we use dead space is by using a hanging ironing board. So I know a lot of people don't iron anymore, but some people still need to. And I feel like having this little ironing board that hangs behind your door is so handy. It just folds right up when you're done using it. And you can store your iron just in your cupboard. It's time to reveal this space. Do you remember how this was just a boring builder raid laundry room and we made over the space without any major renovation? And here's the reveal. I love this modern coastal laundry room. We added so much depth and character to this room by painting the cabinets, the window trim, and the crown molding. We added a little bit of that whimsical touch with these knobs and you can see that the cabinets look so good even though I used a brush. We really want to hide that laundry hookup and look how good the shiplap looks with that shelf in the plant. You can't even tell that there's a laundry hookup there now. Even though my brother was not in favor of the painted crown molding, he really came around to it in the end. And don't forget that we added a ton of storage in here, even though you can't really tell because it's almost like invisible hidden storage. This laundry room makeover costed about $300 and I think we really stretched our budget and we made the most of it mostly by using paint. I hope you love this project. I'll see you for my next budget DIY. Make sure you subscribe to my channel.